Imagine having two 21.5 inch monitors stacked on top of each other but without any physical borders between them. Well, that's exactly what LG has done with the dual op monitor, which is a vertical monitor with a brand new 16-18 aspect ratio. It was officially released recently and so I picked one up just to give it a try. It's also actually quite budget friendly at $699 US dollars or $849 Canadian dollars. Bottom line is that this is a very unique productivity monitor that some will absolutely love and others will certainly question. The first generation of the Ergo stand has been my favorite monitor arm for a long time and I found nothing that works and looks as good as it does. The dual op monitor comes with the new and improved second generation of the Ergo stand. It can be attached to any desk using the C clamp or Grand Mace setup. It's also been designed to be adjustable to fit tabletops with different thicknesses. My favorite part is how well the inbuilt cable management system works. The entire arm feels very well built and eliminates the need for a separate monitor arm, but it also means LG doesn't provide any stands for placing this directly on a desk. The stand also has a good range of motion for tilt, height, swivel, pivot, extend and retract. Final thing to note is that like with other monitor arms, this also creates more desk space and reduces clutter. The setup process is fast and easy and a single person can handle the job without any additional help at all. The dual up monitor has a square double QHD 28 inch screen with a resolution of 2560 by 2880 and an aspect ratio of 1618. It also comes with a max refresh rate of 60 Hz and covers 98% of the DCI P3 color space for accurate color reproduction. These specs might not work well for everyone but for the right person this can be very useful. As with most LG monitors geared towards productivity work, the dual op uses a nano IPS display which means it'll struggle with issues like IPS glow. It also doesn't have any anti-glare treatment so be ready to deal with lots of glares. Also, if you plan on using this in a bright room you might want to reconsider since it's only got 300 nits of maximum brightness. This isn't an issue if you plan to use the monitor in dark rooms or ones with blackout drapes. There's a single button at the bottom center of the monitor that grants access to the OSD menu to control different monitor settings. You can adjust the brightness level, enable auto brightness to adjust the screen brightness based on the light in the room, select between different color temperatures, choose picture modes, and lots more. The monitor also supports HDR10, but I wouldn't say this is one of its strongest features. It doesn't work in picture by picture mode, so it only works when using the monitor with a single computer. There are lots of picture profiles to choose from when hooked up to a computer, but since the monitor has been color calibrated from the factory, the colors are already great and accurate right out of the box. If you plan on using scaling with this to make content appear more visible on the screen, you might end up being disappointed. I tried using lower resolution scaling options on Mac and Windows and that resulted in text and images looking blurry, even though you can't tell based on the screen recording. If you plan on using it at the maximum 2560 by 2880 with one computer or you know 2560 by 1440 with two computers, then you'll have no issues here. There are three ways you can set up the dual monitor for use. The first one is by connecting either a single Mac or PC to the monitor through a single USB-C, HDMI or DisplayPort cable. Using the USB-C connection with a laptop provides 90 watts of power delivery for charging at the same time. This method also allows you to use the monitor in its full 16-18 aspect ratio, which I found can be you know, great for editing and watching vertical videos. The same thing applies to editing photos in Lightroom and Photoshop. For someone who primarily works with vertical content, the 16-18 aspect ratio alone is a strong enough argument for considering this monitor. I've also found that it's perfect for reading ebooks and I'm sure it'll be a hit for programmers who work with long lines of codes. The second way to set it up is using picture by picture from the same source computer to split the screen space in two. This one's probably my favorite way to use a dual op for video editing. With this setup, the monitor operates as two screens with 16-9 aspect ratios each. 
To set it up, you have to use two cables between the Mac or PC and the monitor. You can use any combo of the video input sources the monitor accepts. I use the combo of HDMI and USB-C to split my MacBook into two screens on the dual-op. For multitasking and editing portrait videos, this setup is probably the best. Using this method in Final Cut Pro X, you can send the viewer to the top screen for a much larger and better view of the content being edited. This also separates the timeline, effects, transitions, and other tools. This has definitely been one of my favorite ways to use the monitor so far. While in picture by picture mode, make sure to set up the displays in the display settings on Mac or Windows for seamlessly moving the mouse between both sections of the split screen. This is my default mode for using the monitor since I can easily switch between using the full 16-18 aspect ratio and splitting the screen for multitasking, you know, in uh, picture by picture mode. The third and final way to set up the dual monitor is by using picture by picture again, but this time with two different sources. This can be two Macs, two PCs, or a combination of both. Using the dual up in this mode also gives you access to the inbuilt KVM switch on the monitor to use a single set of keyboard and mouse with both connected computers. This is a highly sought after feature in productivity monitors and so it's a nice feature to have on this. Just like the second way, you have to use two cables between the two sources and the monitor. Again, you can use any combo of the video input sources that the monitor accepts. I use a USB-C connection between my MacBook and the monitor and an HDMI between the PC and the monitor. This is great for people that often work with two computers, say one for personal use and you know the other for work. You can also set up a user defined key on the quick menu to easily access either picture by picture, KVM switch or picture modes. I wouldn't suggest looking into this for gaming at all as it isn't geared towards those users. It does come with game enhancing features that can improve its 5 millisecond response time as well as black stabilizer features for improving black levels during gameplay with lots of dark scenes. I decided to set up the dual op with the Xbox Series X for a quick test to see how it handles high quality gameplay. First off, the 16-18 aspect ratio does not work for gaming and distorts everything, so you'd have to use the monitor in picture by picture mode if you want things to appear normal. The 4K TV details within the Xbox settings also confirms the maximum 60Hz refresh rate, which is less than optimal for gaming with tons of options out there offering higher refresh rates at similar price tags. Playing Assassin's Creed in picture by picture mode looked great and honestly played pretty well. It definitely wouldn't be a major choice for me for gaming at all, but if you wanted to mix productivity and gaming, then at least you know it's possible with this. Finally, the monitor comes with two 7 watt stereo speakers, which sound like you know you'd expect from a monitor like this one. Nothing mind blowing, but it's enough to get the job done, especially if you don't have a pair of external speakers already. This is what they actually sound like. Percent fiber direct to your home. In every game, the developers design it so you can't hurt the kids. No matter how hard you try, the youthful little malakas take the beatings better than ever. After all of that, I'm sure we can all come to an agreement that the dual op is a budget specialty monitor, just like ultrawides, and will certainly not work well for everyone, but it'll be a great fit for the right people. For me, primarily as a video and photo editor, I can see this being a solid second screen, but definitely not as a main screen since I prefer more screen space and a higher resolution monitor for video editing. All right, if you can get past the low 300 nits of maximum brightness, the IPS panel glow issue, the lower resolution, and the scaling issues, then this could be a solid addition to your setup. If you're a content creator that specializes in vertical content, a programmer who deals with long lines of code, a designer, or any other professional that requires a vertical orientation for maximum efficiency, then you might want to check out the LG Dual Up. But yeah, that's pretty much everything there is to say about the monitor. If you're looking to pick one up or check prices on it, make sure to use the link I provided down in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Go ahead and leave a like down below as well. And subscribe if you're new to the channel. Until next time, it's Tommy with Midas Tech, and I'm out.